Hey, everybody, welcome in. It is time for your favorite, my favorite, everybody's favorite, Three Guys Before the Game. It's episode number 432. The title, Jayhawk Funk Baylor Preview. Senator is front and center. He's here. The Dean, Poppy Kirchival, is here as well. Coming up on our program, we'll break down West Virginia's contest against the Jayhawks on Saturday night. WVU, now one of three Big 12 teams at 0-3 in conference play. And we will look ahead to Wednesday's date against one of the other 0-3 teams, the Baylor Bears. Someone's going to be 1-3 in the league before the clock strikes midnight going into Thursday morning. We'll also get into your texts, your questions, and your comments as usual. And we'll do a recap of our first ever live Three Guys Before the Game event. Three Guys is brought to us by our good folks and good friends at Burdette Camping, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at BurdetteCamping.com. Our good buddies at Comax Business Systems, your full-service Konica Minolta dealer. Go to Comax Business Systems at ComaxWV.com. They will manage your business's IT. They can manage your business's voice and phone services. And doing all that 24-7 remote monitoring so that you feel good. And kind of like James Brown used to say, I feel good. good. Yeah. That's what most Comax customers say they just kind of scream and blurt out in the middle of the night they're just like raise out of their bed they say i feel good because they know they know that comax has got their back 10 times they've been named an elite dealer in the state of west virginia exclusive award no other dealers ever received that in west virginia three guys also brought to us by the home of the fly rod slim jim that's go mart if you're not a GoMart Rewards card member, you need to sign up today. Save on gas, your favorite snacks. Visit GoMart.com. Rewards and details. Go to the website, check it out. During our event on Friday, a lot of, a lot of GoMart conversation. And in fact, <laughs> the young lady that was pictured in the last episode holding the Fly Rod Slim Jim, she was here. Terrific. All righty. So let's jump on in this is not where we wanted to be wvu is 0-3 in conference play after saturday night's loss to the jayhawks of kansas west virginia now has one more here at home wednesday against the baylor bears and then on saturday the early 11 a.m central start for West Virginia and the Sooners of Oklahoma the next week back here for a midweek game. And back and forth we go. It's getting real. It's getting quick. Here's how fast this league goes. You know how fast this league goes? How fast, Tony? Well, you think about it. You're already three in. You're going to be four in by Wednesday night. You're going to be five in by the time the week is over. See how quickly he did that, Brent? You play 18 league games, I mean, it's like a third goes by in a real super big hurry. And so, as we've been saying all along, I mean, these games, like anyone who ever says college basketball game, ah, just, I follow it in March. I pick it up in March. That's when I pick it up. Yeah, I get it. Totally understand. Don't want to game shame you. But I'm just saying, like, every single one of these – are huge because they determine who can play in March. And right now, West Virginia's got to find a way out. Tony, we talk a lot on this program about opportunity, whether it's football season or basketball season, because of the quality of the league. And, Brad, I think you mentioned that in the last show is, okay, opportunities. He had an opportunity at Kansas State. Got away from you. Had an opportunity at Oklahoma State. Couldn't finish the deal. But then you say, okay, you're playing Kansas. At home, this is a nationally ranked team, ranked third in the country, defending national champions. You got the home crowd. You have an opportunity. And West Virginia's played good teams at the Coliseum before. They've played top-ranked teams in the Coliseum before. And that opportunity 
not not didn't slip away. It got yanked away from you. You were not in that game. You were not competitive. And I think even if you had even if you had lost, but it had been like a competitive game, and the crowd had been it in the whole time, and they get a shot at the gun, you you would have, you would have felt better about it. But you cannot come away from that game feeling anything but but discouraged and concerned about what's ahead. Concerned, I think, is a good word there because because you're right. You just didn't you didn't push Kansas, and you're used to pushing Kansas here in a lot of years. We talked all all show Thursday about the six and four record against Kansas at home, and, and I thought it was pretty simple. I thought the the game came down to Kansas just made more three pointers than you did. They took you out of the game immediately with that hot start, six of seven from three, seven of ten in the first half. And a crowd, a giant crowd that was ready to explode and help you along, never had a chance to get going. Kansas took you out and then never let you back in. And if you're going to beat a team that is better than you, and Kansas is better than West Virginia, you've got to go take it from them. Generally, they're not going to give it to you. And West Virginia just didn't do enough to take it from them. We'll, we'll talk in some details here and recap some of the keys of the game from Thursday and what went right, what went wrong. But to me, it was as simple as that. <laughs> from Saturday? What did you just say? The keys of the game from Thursday that we talked about. Oh, oh. we'll talk about today. I thought you were still uh, trying to get me. The game was Don't you, you guys see you, you clowns up here trying to pin something on me? You weren't listening. You're half-assing the show early, and you weren't listening. So either engage with the show or shut your mouth. I thought How about I that. Shut your mouth. Engage and listen, or shut your mouth. Well, I mean, I think you want to go. Let's go. I think both Hoppy and I may have had the opportunity to raise an eyebrow after your blatant disregard for the date of the game last week. We thought you may maybe even made it earlier. We thought from Friday to Thursday. No, I hadn't. I'd adjusted. You're over there doing four things, about ready to pull off coffee, and you're not listening. So either pay attention to the damn show or let's move on. Oh, I finished the coffee already. Hey, um, how many times did people bring up the fact that you thought the game was on Friday during <laughs> a lot of people? <laughs> hey, Brad, you know the game's tomorrow. Hey, I heard but you know what? It wasn't, you're right, Brad, about them getting off to the fast start. I mean, hitting those threes, that was incredible. But you also knew that, that would, they would cool off. I mean, you can't keep that for the whole game. <laughs> but then even so, West Virginia could not. You know, they, okay, they made a couple small runs, but just could not. They did. They didn't look like they belong there. You know, I mean, Kansas is good. Okay, are they great? I, I I don't know, but but Kansas just looked like they knew exactly what they wanted to do. They did what they wanted to do offensively, defensively. They looked in they looked in control the entire game, and West Virginia never looked like it had any rhythm. It, it just didn't look. It, you, you never you never got a sense, even though with West Virginia made many runs, you never got a sense that West that the game was in danger Be, for Kansas. To, to Brad's point, why? Because the first five minutes, six minutes of the game, it was done. They came in, and if they had a pin, they stuck it into fourteen thousand people, and the crowd just became whoosh, they're out, and everything gets tighter now. But, but you've you seen had Joe West to punch Virginia him. come back. You've seen West Virginia come back. You had to punch him in the face and put doubt into Kansas's mind early in the game. That's how West Virginia has beat them through the years. They come out, the place is lit up, and you go out there and run, and they go like, what the heck did we just get ourselves into? They never got, what did we just get ourselves into? And the only other way you win by not doing that is if there's some point where you get blistering hot. And West Virginia couldn't do that either. No. So Kansas started hot, continued, shot nearly 50% from three for the game. You, you didn't you didn't guard them closely enough. You didn't run them off the line. You didn't close out. And then on the offensive end, you just simply didn't make your threes. Four of 20 from the field. You didn't make enough free throws down in the 60% again from the free throw line, even though, as we talked on Thursday, you were going to have a huge advantage getting to the line. You did. You didn't make enough. So West Virginia just didn't do the things it had to do to go get that win. And, and to have a game against Kansas – where in the second half, at times, and Tony, you were there, obviously. I mean, at times, it was like a tomb, right? I mean, nothing. And you can't blame the fans. I mean, I, how often are they supposed to get up during a game? you got to give them something. I mean, the place was dead. Yeah, it's an energy game. This is a game about energy. This is a game. Basketball is a game of energy, momentum, and runs. That's what it is. And the prime scores for West Virginia never were able to engage the entire game, right? And as a result of that, it left West Virginia oftentimes uh, with some very poor offensive sets. They looked poor. They were doing their best just to try to get the ball up to the rim. 
that's because you lost your fluidity of running your offense and making shots. It became try to get something up to the rim before the shot clock goes off. You can't win that way. You can't win that way. So now what becomes the question? Well, you're, but you're, I mean, you're, you're in, you're in a tough spot. I mean, you're going to play Baylor. Baylor's 0-3 in the league. Mm-hmm. Now, who would have – that That tells you, I think, and I don't know if that speaks to Baylor's deficiencies or how good this league is. Well, Iowa State's really good. Yeah. They're now inside the top 15, right? The Iowa State beat Baylor in Ames. You lost to Kansas State in overtime Saturday. Baylor did. So that one's right there for the taking as well. Sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> sound, sound familiar? Sound familiar? Yeah. That's why when we were here last week and we were talking about the losses to K-State and Oak State, you're saying like, uh, one thing is you're saying, well, it's only the first two. But the, the reality of it is this. Oklahoma State and Kansas State are finishing in the bottom five. They could be six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. They're going to finish there. And it looks like Texas Tech is also going to be below the five. Okay. So, <laughs> so where are you going to be? <laughs> well, where are you going to be? That's the thing. I, I don't know. I mean, I'll try not to keep saying this, but never in the history, a hundred plus years of West Virginia basketball, have the Mountaineers been in a basketball conference that's this good. Not even smelling close. Southern Conference, West Virginia just tarred and feathered the Southern Conference. Not even the Big East when they initially got in the Big East? No. I mean, it was really good, but guess what? There were teams in there you were going to beat when you got in there. Virginia Tech, Rutgers, they're in there. You can get them. Providence, you can get them. BC, you can get them. Just tell me today. Like line, line up the opponent and just say, okay, where's your easy W? Well, there aren't there aren't any. Well, Zero. Th- well, here's the thing, though. Given how West Virginia's playing, there isn't any. I mean, West Virginia's competed in this league. It's played for Big 12 championships. So to me, the difference is in West Virginia. It's not in everybody You're right. else. You're right. This league's been good since you've been in it. West Virginia is the one that has not living up to where it needs to be with its great teams. That's the difference. When, when Javon Carter and that whole crew – we're running through this league and and contending, we would say the same thing. Well, Texas Tech's really good. Okay, fine, go get them. Mm-hmm. Right? Baylor's right. Fine, go get them. Well, here comes Oklahoma. Yeah, they're good. They got a couple good guys. Trey Young's going to come in here. Trey Young's really okay. Fine, line up, take him. Carter, match up with Trey Young. Got him. Right. Okay, win. See ya. So that to me is the difference. It's we're going to keep talking about the strength of this league all year, but the league looks even stronger when you're just not playing very well or you're not very good. And that's when we need to see what this West Virginia team can do. Can it bounce back? Can it get better? Can it find ways to score more or shoot better? Because if it doesn't, I'm not sure the defense has shown it's good enough to lock down the other team. I think that's where you're falling apart right now is it, it past West Virginia teams when they've gone through the scoring droughts. And we've seen that forever. That happens. Happens to a lot of teams. But West Virginia's defense was always good enough to lock the other team and force some scoring droughts. This This iteration of this team doesn't feel like it's there yet defensively. These other teams, the three in conference play, have been able to do what they want offensively a lot easier than than previous seasons. It's also when West Virginia's had good teams, they had guys that you knew week that game in and game out, for the most part, they were gonna score points, right? They were gonna give you 18, 20, 22 points. They were consistent. Now you look at this team and say, okay, who's is it is it Stevenson? He well, he can, but he had a bad night the other night. Is it Trey Mitchell? Well, he can. Is it Emmett Matthews? But, you know, we're back in this thing I think we talked about last year, maybe not to the, to the degree, but okay, who is it? Who are the players you can count on for points? Yeah. It's an identity thing. We talk about this in football. West Virginia, at this point, has lost its identity in basketball. And by that, I mean this. In the Prest Virginia era and in the eras prior to that, the 2010 team, obviously, that had the great success and the great run, Teams did not like playing West Virginia. They went, oh, crap. We got to play these guys. I think that's gone. 
I don't think teams go like, oh my goodness, we've got to go play West Virginia. You lost your edge. Whether it was a edge that existed in reality or a perceived edge, you lost your toughness. You lost your, oh gosh, I hate playing these guys. I don't think that's the case. And when a team comes in and they're not in that mode, they play rather than think. And that's where I think this is right now. I would agree. Right? You know, not in a literal sense, but in a figurative sense. Your teams that have the most success are the teams that go out and, you know, we kind of joke around a lot of times when we say, oh, yeah, I'm going to line, I'm going to punch you right in the face. Well, that's what's lacking from this team. I guess the team's not scaring anybody. They're not. And and every announcer who is not from here, they come in and they talk about it. And a lot of coaches do too. They talk about the environment of the Coliseum, one of the toughest places to play. I mean, that gets repeated. And that can be true. It can be true. But as is evidenced by Saturday, by, uh, Saturday I almost said Friday, as evidenced by Saturday. Or Thursday. Imagine that. Yeah. By Saturday, it can also dis- disappear and not be a factor. Mm-hmm. Ken Palm still has West Virginia 8-10 and 10 Big 12 play because he had that Kansas game as a loss, albeit much closer than what it ended up to be. How about this? I found this interesting. The eight wins, and again, that's a fluid database that's going to change as more data gets inputted in there as each team plays. But right now, the eight projected wins – for West Virginia and Big 12 play by Ken Palm are by a combined 29 points, 3.6 points per game. So that Jeez. tells you the yeah. coin flip nature of the league that you're in and how important it is for West Virginia there's a, there's no margin. To, to find some games here where it's got to get wins. And that's why I think you're going to go back and really kick yourself for the Kansas State loss, a game you were up double digits on the road with a chance to win that you should have closed out. Because yeah. there's going to be games like the other night against Kansas when, but, when they're yeah. just better than you and they beat you and there wasn't much you could do about it. Agreed. Early sample size. First three games in the league. League games only here. West Virginia scoring in the conference, seventh. Scoring defense, seventh. Scoring margin, tenth. Free throw percentage, tenth. Field goal percentage, tenth. West Virginia shooting 37% from the field mm-hmm. in its three league games. Wow. 37%. Field goal percentage defense, five. Three-point defense, five. Three-point shooting, 10. 23% from three-point range. 23%. That Kansas team that was in here in its first three games, shooting 46% from three-point line. Now, here's something really interesting. West Virginia is always good year in and year out in what? Rebounding offense. Number one. Number one in the league. Rebounding defense. West Virginia is down to eight. So wait a second. To your stat from last week, Brad. Offensive rebounds per game. West Virginia, 15. They are getting opportunities on offensive rebounds, not scoring. Well, Brad had that great stat. Yeah. That was Last week, just, there, right? there it is right there. Still plays. They're eighty they're eighty fifth percentile in offensive rebound and percentage, but their field goal percentage on second shots is only in the fifty third percentile. Yeah. So they're not able to convert. They need to be converting more of those. Turnover margin eight. Assist to turnover eight. Ninth and three pointers made. So there it all is. So the question becomes. Which of those can you fix? Things change really, really quickly if the ball goes through the hoop. That's that's so. The, so to answer your question there, what I think ha, what what I think you can change is you you've got you got to make more shots. I mean, you just have Stevenson. Stevenson has been having a fantastic year. He's third in the Big Twelve when you do usage and true shooting percentage on an axis, and you put all players out there, he's all the way on this end. There's only two players better than him in that. So Stevenson will get back going again. He'll get his mojo back. Clearly, the the incident at Oklahoma State changed how he played against Kansas. I don't think there's any question about that. He was not the same guy from an energy and attitude standpoint that he had been. So I, I think that clearly 
affected his play. You've got to get Stevenson back to himself. And Trey Mitchell's got to be really good. That's your other really skilled guy that needs to take over offensively. So you you got to find a way to get those shots to drop. And then number two, the free throw percentage has to get back up because you're continuing to get to the line and you were again. We talked last week that that was going to be a big advantage in this game for West Virginia, and it held. West Virginia was in the 88th percentile in terms of free throw attempts in a single game. Kansas was just in the 39th percentile. But your free throw percentage in the 60s didn't overcome them shooting nearly 90%. You only had a plus one point advantage at the free throw line. So that can't happen. If West Virginia is going to win games, it's got to have a much bigger advantage at the free throw line. So at the free throw line so far, Jimmy Bell has taken 18 and Muhammad Wagi has taken 10. That makes them 12 of 28 below 50%. To your point that some of these guys can shoot in three league games, Trey Mitchell, 91%, 11 of 12. Emmett Matthews, 77%, 10 of 13. Kedrian Johnson, 71%, 10 of 14. Eric Stevenson, 71%, 5 of 7. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, you got to get these guys shots you got to get these guys, find a way to get them shots at this point. Eric Stevenson right now in the first three league games is shooting 31-21. 31 from the field, 21 from three. To Brad's point, that's not staying there. No, that'll come up. He's too good a shooter for that to stay there. That's going to go up. Trey Mitchell shooting 41%. That probably goes up. Emmett Matthews, 52% from the field in the first three league games, but his three has not fallen for him. He's one out of his first eight. Kedrian Johnson didn't play on Saturday. Guaranteed that he'll get better. He's shooting 5%, one of 18 in the first two league games. Jimmy Bell, eight shots from the floor in the first three league, league games. Think about that. Eight shots, 62%. Joe Toussaint's down to 25%. Seth Wilson's at 41, 0 for 5 from 3. So you get the point. Let's go back for a second. I did some deep diving on some free throw numbers. Okay. You want to, you want to hear something How here? How deep? Like Jacques like, Cousteau deep went, like on the floor of the ocean? Deep. Yeah, it went pretty deep. And it was, again, sometimes these stats just back up what your eyes are telling you or showing you. I thought this was pretty telling, though. These, this is prior to the Kansas game. Okay. Prior to the Kansas game, free throw rate, I talk about that a lot, Hoppy. The amount of times you get to the free throw line, how many free throws you take versus how many field goal attempts you're taking. Jimmy Bell, Jimmy Bell's free throw attempt rate in the last five games prior to Kansas is 200%, meaning he's taking way more free throws than he's taking field goals. He's getting to the line. His free throw attempt rate's 200%, 99th percentile, as good as it can get. But his free throw shooting percentage is 50%, just 24th percentile. So your guy getting to the line the most is not making free throws. Okay, we knew that. Mo Wagi. Wait a second, I'll go back one second. So, so what are teams going to start doing? They're going to foul him and not let him score from close to the basket. Hack Why Jimmy. wouldn't you just hack him? They're going to hack a Jimmy. Right? Big guy that's going to back you down. You send somebody at him and swipe, and if you foul him, okay. If he goes up, put a body on him. Don't let him shoot two-foot layups on you. Right. Put him on the free throw line. Mo Wagi. Free throw attempt rate the last five games prior to Kansas, 127%. Again, 99th percentile, but he's shooting just 57% from the line, 36th percentile. So you're too, we keep talking about these guys. Now, that wasn't the case Saturday because Jimmy Bell hit both of his free throw attempts. The other guys were missing free throws. That's what can't happen. When you get your good shooters to the line, they've got to convert at a higher clip. But I, I thought that was fascinating that those two guys are getting to the line at, at such an, a, a high rate but not completing it. And that's why I think, Hoppy, that's why I think those numbers will start to normalize a little bit because your other guys are going to start getting more free throw attempts. You know, you, you would help, but you would hope. But, you know, sitting here listening to these stats and, Tony, some of the things you point out, I mean, there's a lot of deficiencies <laughs> You know, it's not just, I mean, yeah, scoring is one thing, and that's the biggest thing, but there just seem to be a lot of deficiencies. And it doesn't seem like that if you correct just one thing that you'll be okay. It seems like there's a lot going on here that 
that needs to get better. Yeah, yes. Every team has deficiencies. I think if you're West Virginia right now, let's fix. Let's start with one. Let's fix one thing. Can we fix the offense? Can we fix the defense? Probably not the defense. Because I think you've played enough games at this point. If you're going to be a great defensive team, you'd be a great defensive team right now. That's not a light bulb that turns on. But there are tweaks that you can make offensively where they can start to run certain things to try to get different people shots or more shots for one particular person or two people, and you can become more uh, strategic in how you're trying to get your points produced. But defensively, probably not. You know, poor Muhammad Wagi, still a newcomer, continues to struggle. You saw it on Saturday. Did not make a switch. Guy gets behind him. Yeah. Dunk. That's like that's been all season long. And so they need to kind of fix those kinds of things. If they're saying like, hey, when he's out there, he can't do that. He's not going to understand that. Then don't bring him out. You got to figure out cheat. You got to cheat the system, cheat ways in order not to get out of position because it continually happens. How many points have they given up in the first three league games by guys getting inside of the defender and getting easy, uncontested baskets, like multiple occasions, more so than normal? And again, that's just, in Mo's case, that's just his bulb hasn't turned on yet as to him being comfortable on how to come out there and then when to make that switch to go back down. And that cost you points. That's what it is. So, all right. Well, that was certainly a walk into the ice cream shop. A lot of fun. Well, you there. can't. I mean, it, it, everybody saw it. Yeah, I know. Let's let's jump into Baylor, Senator. How big can they win the game? So. You hate Baylor coming in here 0-3, don't you? <laughs> yes. A team that had national championship aspirations. You're going to get a hungry, desperate Baylor team. The one thing about that group, though, so far is their defense isn't been at the hasn't been at the elite level that it's been the last few years. And again, you're <laughs> take that with a grain of salt, Hoppy, because this is a team that is still excellent and will probably still push to be in the top two or three in this league. But when you say the defense isn't what it's been, it's been national championship good for a couple of years. 56th right now in Ken Palm heading into this past weekend. Free throw line is going to be a key again. And, and listen, we're going to come back to some of these keys every, every game. But Baylor's a top 40 free throw attempt team versus a West Virginia defense that's bottom 50 nationally. So West Virginia's also been putting teams on the line. It's the same thing the other way. West Virginia 28th, Baylor bottom 80 and putting you on the line. So you've got to get to the line again as you have. Make more at the line. Here's the other part. You better defend the three better than you did against Kansas. Baylor's 24th in the country in three-point attempt rate. 46% of its shots are threes. How about that? Almost 50% of the shots Baylor takes are threes. So if they're making threes, you got big problems. If you can defend force it to be difficult, get them on a night when they're missing threes and you get a shot. I'll be interested to see. I, I got to thinking the other day when um, there was a post-game press conference for Kansas after they beat Texas Tech, and McCullough was asked about the reception he got because he was a transfer from Texas Tech, and they were on him hard, and he said that, you know, he heard that. In fact, he's one of the last players to come on the court, and so – that that is hard, I think, for anybody to deal with. So now think about Jalen Bridges coming back and how that's going to go uh, on Wednesday night. And I would think, things being what they are, that they're going to be on him pretty hard uh, in pregame and in introductions in the game. Every time he gets the ball, just something to watch out for and to see how he handles that. That's not easy for anybody to handle. It's hard, man. It's taken down a lot of players through the years who have had various situations um, when they come back, and it, it can be hard. Very rarely does a player flourish that becomes the boo victim in a game. In every game, there's a boo victim. I mean, like in the student section, they have a sheet, and they say, okay, we're booing this guy, right? Yeah, they booed Grady Dick. How'd that work out? Yeah, the, the, point, <laughs> the, the point guard from UAB, they, they, I mean, he was the guy. Um, you know, but there have been a lot of guys that have come through here. Um, you know, the one that always comes to my mind was Bimbo Coles. 
Bimbo Coles was playing for Virginia Tech. He came back here, I think, twice, and it did not go well right. at all. Right. I don't know why they. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why they were booing Bimbo because his deal was he. I mean, he he was. He never was here. Well, no. I he, mean, he, he his deal was you either sign in the early signing period. There's not going to be a scholarship. I think they could have got him in the spring. But that didn't happen. And so anyway, long story short, um, as a result of that, he was the boo factor and um, did not go well here. Career went quite well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he did. Right. <laughs> did yeah, he did. Yeah, okay. did. He did pretty good. So anyway, yeah, that, that'll be a big piece of it. That'll be hard. That'll be hard uh, for Jalen uh, to do that. But students are back in session. Yeah. Class has started today. So everyone will be, uh, will be back for their first real game since before the Christmas break. So, yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be intense. So the key to beating Baylor? Keep them off the three-point line. They got to they miss threes. Yeah. They got to miss threes. They're making threes, you're in trouble because they shoot so many. Yeah. So you've got you've to find a way to get Mitchell and Stevenson cranked up and going. You've got to continue to get to the line, but get to the line with your good free-throw shooters, have them make it, and you've got to do a better job at – it, for a team that shoots almost 50, you've, you've got you've to force them to not take the threes and get inside and take more twos if you can. Again, easier to sit here and say that than it is to go out and guard them and do that. Must mm-hmm. win? Uh, must win in order to do what? Get to the, get NCAA, to the NCAA tournament? Way, yes. I, I mean, I think you're probably on a must win throughout the rest of the season if you want to get to the tournament. Okay. So basically what you're saying now, three games in, you've got 15 left. At a minimum, you've got to go eight and seven to finish eight and ten in order to just be on the bubble as an eight and ten to get in. Yeah, so your so your margin of error has been eliminated. So again, those are fluid and each time you ask that we'll we'll adjust it based on where the projections are. But if you take it based on answer that question based on just what the projections tell you, it's a must win because you I don't think you can get in sliding below eight and ten. You know, Ken Palm has Baylor at 7-11 and 11 in the league projection for the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, to answer your question, yeah, it's almost as must-win as you can get in a college basketball season that really doesn't have a lot of true must-wins. Yeah. But if you want to get to the tournament, you better but, start but winning. I think, I think you're right. You're, is that now you're at to the point where you can almost apply that to every game mm-hmm. if you want to get to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and especially these home games yeah. against a team where you've got to go get one back. Maybe you... Maybe you gave up both Kansas games, right? Because it's going to be hard to win in the fog. They're probably better than you. They showed that the other night. They're going to beat you at home. Ba- Baylor's one I think you can say, okay, go out and make some shots, see if you can get a win. On Saturday, Jalen Wilson on the floor. He's going to be in the league, you would think, at some point. Senator, your, your yes. travels in the NBA, right? He's in. Yes. Your guys are saying that he's in. Yes. And uh, Grady, Grady Dick's Dick definitely going to be in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here comes another one, Keontae George mm-hmm. from Baylor freshman and watch him play he plays like a 24 year old 25 year old plays like a man so far he's seventh in the conference in scoring he's in the top 12 in field goal percentage he's 10th in assists he's sixth in free throw percentage he's sixth in three point percentage he's fifth in three pointers made top 15 assist to turnover ratio he just got he's got a he has a look and a feel about him when he plays the game of just a really just solid, wired in, solid, confident player. Probably going to be a top five pick. Yeah. I mean, he'll, he'll be way up the list. So here, you want to do some percentiles again? Yeah. 96th percentile in points scored nationally. 89th percentile in assists per game. 88th percentile rebounds per game. 83rd percentile in steals per game. So you talk about a well-rounded guy that can do it all and is better than most people he's playing against. Mm-hmm. Keontae George, he's been excellent. Yeah, as expected, right? Mm-hmm. Lived up to the expectations. All right. You guys got anything else uh, that needs to be brought up before we dive in? No? Any other Baylor notes? Any hop in your Flo, Flo Thomba's back? Flo is playing. Does he have an apartment here? I mean, 
<laughs> Why, you think he's been around a while? My goodness. You know, I looked it up the other day because I wanted to see. How what, many games has he played? <laughs> well, I looked it up the other day. I wanted to find which college player is has the most games. There's a dude, I, get, I lost it, but 150, 160 games right now. <laughs> Remember oh. Jalen Coleman Lands that played for Kansas last year and he was, had been at Iowa State, State and all yeah. over the place? He was like, he like is top three all time <laughs> games, like, like 160 games. <laughs> Why not, <laughs> man? Hey, you know. I don't know what will happen in 15 or 20 years, but why can't colleges have a franchise player? That's what you've long advocated that. Hey, the kids, I mean, if you're making NIL money. It's coming. I talked to someone recently. <laughs> I may have said this on the show. I talked to someone recently that said, not here in Morgantown, but somewhere else, that said Oscar Shibway may go back to Kentucky again next year because he's making about $3 million a year. Which might be more than he would make at his draft status in the NBA. Correct. Take the guarantee. Right. Right. Take the guarantee. Because he's money. not. Because he's sure. not like a. No. First ten guys taken. No. So if he was like the twentieth guy taken, you make more. You make more at Kentucky than right. With the, Why not do that? Put it into the bank and then you know you go on and play. You know, here at one last Baylor piece. I, I I would be a little bit concerned. You know, the last two times, last two years, Scott Drews come in here. I, don't, I mean, assume he does it at Muriel's. Because if you're going to Fairmont, I assume he does it at Muriel's. <laughs> He's pulled somebody out of the Fairmont area and taken him. Got Dale Bonner two years ago. Was right. former star at Fairmont yeah, State. Yeah. Was excellent in the MEC conference. And last year got Jalen Bridges, who, of yeah. course, from Fairmont, played at Fairmont Senior. Well, who's he going to pick up now? He just, like, he just takes guys like anywhere. Like, Dante Stills. Like jo Joe Lambiot. <laughs> Is he going to like get Lamb, bring him back down to Waco, or what? <laughs> Maybe maybe Arnold the bus driver. I mean, Kim Mulkey when she used to drive, he Arnold the bus driver used to pick up the Baylor women's team. She got to know Arnold, and you know they he she became she gave him a national championship ring. Excuse me. Yeah, Arnold has a Baylor national championship ring. Yes, he does, cowboy. So guess what? He from You're, Fairmont also. Yeah, he's a Fairmont guy. You're not the only guy in North Central West Virginia with a women's national championship ring in your possession. How about that? That's you got a UConn ring. Arnold's got a Baylor women's ring. Bring in your ring sometime. You haven't seen it? No, I want to see it. All right, I'm bringing it in. Is it pretty good? No, it's tiny compared to today's standards. How about you? I mean, that was a long time ago. 95, 96, 94, whatever. I don't even remember well, what year it was. I mean, not to be sexist, but wouldn't a women's, women's <laughs> ring be smaller? Thank you, Hoppy. Yeah, Brad, they're not going to have like a – they don't have – their fingers aren't as big as man's fingers. I'm just asking <laughs> – it was yours, man size. <laughs> I mean, there's been some dumb things said on this podcast. Those, those, that's right up there. Well, I thought Hoppy had a fair point. Well, I just. Do you think I got the same ring Rebecca Lobo got? <laughs> or do you think they made me a male version of the ring? That's a fair point. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> I mean, honest to God. This show. This show. Do you feel this is a stupid podcast? Oh, it is a stupid podcast. Yeah. So let's jump. So anyway, on. I'm just saying, if you're at Muriel's and you see Scott Drew around, just have a head on a swivel. If I would, <laughs> see if he's trying to recruit. Fairmont I'm, Senior's got a couple dudes now. If I'm a server at Muriel's, I might try to get picked up. So bring him back down there to wake up. All right, let's jump on in here. Um, ready to go with textual healing, 304-404-4086. If you ever like to text us, 304-404-4086. So um, we did have a wonderful event on Friday. It went as well as we had hoped for. Organization went off without a hitch. It was really good. We had our picture. Oh, there you go. There's a, there's a look. Thank you, Taylor. We had a, there's a, the a show that we did uh, in, downstairs in our Hall of Fame room, and we had a great turnout from all of the folks. All 50 people were present and accounted for. 
And then after we did that part of the show, we headed over to the Apothecary Owl House and we debuted Hoppy Kirch of Vale. And that went off extremely well. And there is Grace, the owner of Apothecary Ale House, making the first pour of the beer and presenting that to the hopster. <laughs> Hop then, like a professional beer drinker that he is, gave it a look, looked uh, left, looked right, and we had to... Um, well, wait, wait a second. Hey, Taylor, do you have audio on that? Like, if I bring up... Can we put the audio on that, Taylor? Let me see here. Let me just try to press a button. I'll get the. I want to give everyone the full, the full feel of uh, what that sounded like. See and how if, this works. If we can. Uh, this is kind of like engineering on the fly. Okay, Taylor, see if you can pop got that up nice there with the audio. Left to right flow. Looks like foam's coming up well. You got it. Yeah, I got it. A little bit yeah. over the left side of the lip. Yeah. Uh, very nice white off, and here it is. Great crowd on here. Man. Great crowd pack. If, if, yeah. if, if you would, at this point, I do think that we have to get it in unison. If everyone could please say, Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. One, two, three. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. Great people. Here we go. Virtual nice for everyone. So right away, I could tell you liked it right there at oh, that yeah. point. Then you gave a uh, yeah you gave a review. You said it's not heavy. It, it's not. It, what would you? you I said not too heavy, right. not too light, not too hoppy. Yeah, it was, it was it really was, good. It was really good. Oh, it was it was it was crisp. It was clean. It had you know a little bit of hoppiness. It was there was some um, some uh, elements of like fruit in there. You know, it was really good. I mean, I think and I went around and maybe people were and I know we want to talk about the folks that were there and we had a wonderful crowd and I, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to talk to everybody because um, yeah, I went to fix that. Well, no, I went around. No, and I you, toasted. No, you, I toasted half of the room. Then I got sidetracked, yeah. so I didn't get to toast the other half. And but it looked stayed. like everybody was really, really yeah. enjoying it. Maybe if you would have stayed longer, you could have met all the people. What are you saying? Well, I think I just said it. <laughs> Had a lady come to me when the regular facility opened at six p.m. Oh, Georgie. She was very excited to see you. Is hot? Where's Hoppy? Where's hot? Where's where's hot? I could see it in her face. She had this. Where, 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 I said, no, he left. And the look, just whew, sad moment uh, for her. It was a nice, I'm sorry about that. It was a nice event. No, and it was, what it was, was absolutely, perfectly on script for you. Yes, it was. But, I mean, I mean, but not just, you know, Tony... And I know we've we've talked about this since then, but how nice everybody was. I mean, everybody well, came. Everybody was just wonderful and meeting everybody. It looked like Brad. Everybody's having a good time. Happy to be there. Like we were all the the whole club got you know the the band all got back together. <laughs> it was it was just it was just great. I, I hope everybody everybody I talked to seemed to enjoy it, and I hope that each person enjoyed it as much as we did. I think yeah. that's well said. Yeah, you hit it. So I didn't realize, and Brad already beer shamed me on this. So there's this app. That's called Untapped, where people rate craft beers around the country. And at this point, the Kerchevel is a 3.82, which is really, really good because Chestnut Brew Works' biggest beer is the Halleck Pale Ale. Yeah, that's a nice beer. And that is like a 3.9 something. So this is really getting some really, really good reviews to start this thing off. Um, let me just kind of see here. And I thought, and, and Bill. And some of those reviews, I would point out, those aren't just coming from the event. Those are no, now no, those available. Are those are available here in, in multiple different Morgantown locations. So this person, William, said, good beer, hazy, hoppy, IPA. Um, this, this person, Jessica, wrote, holy crap. I didn't know that a Pilsner could be remarkable, but this one is. So citrusy without any of the bitterness. Yeah. That's a, Bill said that. I mean, Bill, Bill, the Bill br- Rittenauer, who's the oh. owner founder of Chestnut Brew Works, and he explained. I mean, he put a. He's Brad, got a I mean, doctorate. He talk- he's got a doctorate. He knows what he's doing. He's I mean, got. He's great, and his guys are great. Right? Yeah. I mean, oh, that, yeah. that was an A plus crew. They oh, knew what yeah. they were doing. They weren't just throwing. And they, this and they together. said, "Yeah, we're just throwing together. Like, here's a beer. That no, we want right. to be this, but talking about this, but not, you know, just that. I mean, they they thought it through. They did. Here's here's a review from Shauna. She said, I know almost nothing about the namesake, 
but it is a nice, dry, hopped Pilsner. I'm so there you go. A shot at you. Why'd she have to do that? No, she was being <laughs> honest. She goes, I don't know what this Kirch of old L is, but I'm, I like it, which, is, which means a ton. Speaking of Bill, over at the Chestnut Brew, look what he made for us. Oh. State of what? Why Bill is made it that? Of, why is go it the other way. Game? Yeah. So that's the state of West Virginia there. You can tell the panhandles, and it's three. He does woodwork, too. Wow. Yeah, he does woodwork, too. Does it really? Well, he made, did you see the coasters that he made for us? No. He made what are those? Oh, they're up on my desk. They're, he made these. Uh, and so what this whole thing is, he uses reclaimed West Virginia wood. This is West Virginia chestnut. And it's certified, reclaimed West huh. Virginia chestnut. And he does this stuff. He does a great nice. job. That, that's cool. That thing's yeah. pretty sweet. So shout out to the folks at Chestnut Brew Works because they took our silly idea and they made a wonderful beer. Um, okay. That's that. And then the other piece of it is this beer is now going to be available in a very limited run for until it runs out or until we give the uh, high sign to uh, to do it again. So here's where it's going to be available later this week. Oh, Might be Thursday night, Friday. In Morgantown, the Tap Room, Jeans, Keglers, Black Bear, Lefties, and then also at Big Sandy, Von Blaze, and the Varsity Club. Wow. Yes. Also, um, yeah, the... Grace and the apothecary people, her husband and her employees, they were so, I mean, they were. Oh, they were they, awesome. They were four seasons asking their customer service. Agree. Yes. Agree. Perfect. And Luke Very Dar- high level. Luke Darnell and the barbecue, the food was perfect. A plus. Off the chart, tasty. Just tasty food. And um, also, Darren Butcher. Raleigh County comes in. He's a B. He's got. He, you remember he, seven he, hives. Seven hives. <laughs> Butcher's Apiary in uh, Beckley. Really, he cheats it in Mount Hope. Claims Beckley Metroplex, but he made us pure mountain honey. So that's really good. And then lastly, we had several inquiries because we had some special swag that we wore on Friday. And people are asking, where do I get that? Because it was some really nice quarter zip stuff and some apparel stuff. Uh, we're efforting for people that are interested. Those were from Phil at Daniels. Oh, excellent pieces. Did Phil really come? Nice. Efforting. Phil came. He uh, did. Had but, you not uh, left early? He was. Had seen you Phil. not he left had, early? He had to close the store. He's proprietor of his shop. He had once he. Hey, he was really disappointed as well the public, as the other lady. He hustled in. I think kind of his first words to me were, not how did it go, was, where's Hoppy? <clears throat> anyway, decisions that we make <laughs> I in do life. Think it was a great time. It was. It was really good. Super fun. People were fun. Oh, People great. The people that were here were awesome. And it just went off without a hitch. How about, I mean, how about Dr. John? Oh, yeah. I was so, there was a guy standing there, and I was just talking to people, and I went up and introduced myself. And, and Dr. John from Cleveland. Cleveland Clinic. Cleveland Clinic. <laughs> Got a hospital up there. Uh, like here's a doctor from the Cleveland Clinic, drove in, sure, took part, enjoyed an ale, drove back. Yeah. Med school, uh, went to med school here. He went to med school here. Yeah, so a process. lot of great stories. A lot of great stories. Also, what's really neat is there's a QR code on the growler that plays the hoppy, hoppy, hoppy song that we play on this show. And audio QR code. I went into the back end of the website last night and you can see how many times it's been played and where it's been played. And it was amazing. You know, all over West Virginia as South as Charlotte, North Carolina and somebody in New York state. It already got there. Growlers already made it there. It's already made it there. So distribution. That's yeah. great. We hit the over on female attendees too. Yeah. And I don't know that one of them called us idiots. No, they kind of liked this because it was six and a half, right? Yeah, they kind of, they kind of like that this. was the pregame line. Yeah, I lost on my bet. Five and a half. I bet, I bet Taylor that thirteen people would ask him to have his picture made with him. What'd you get? What happened there? I think it was like two. <laughs> Taylor Taylor looked good. Taylor had a text. Oh my gosh, Taylor looked yeah. great. Yeah, terrific. Texter, hey three guys, finally made it back to Morgantown after the long road trip to K-State and Oklahoma State. I'll not comment on the basketball. We know how that went. But a few points for those who may consider 
a road trip someday. Round trip, very long, 2,500 <laughs> yeah. miles. Very in all caps. Of course, didn't know that going in. <laughs> Slaps Barbecue in Kansas City on the way out was outstanding. Recommendation from TC, we crushed it. Kansas State's facilities are nice. The crowd was loud, very purple. Oklahoma State, incredibly orange, and the $8 upper-level seats were awful. Because mm. we talk about the – he goes, I couldn't tell the angle of any pass or shot. The attendants at the stadium said we could sit in the Oklahoma State student section since they were still on break. We ended up right next oh. to the WVU bench, and having never had a floor seat before made that experience much better. It's good customer service there. Yeah, sure. it is. Freddy's like Burgers there. at the arena. Freddy's Burgers. They were also surprisingly good, he said. Fans incredibly loud for as few as there were. It was intimidating, but everyone at both arenas very friendly. My wife talked to a lady at Kansas State with her gold-flying WV shirt on. Turns out she went to school here, currently lives in southwest Kansas. But they have land in <laughs> Preston <laughs> County, of yeah. course, right? Great trip. Highly recommend it to the others. Mark and Michelle finally back in Motown. Didn't we ask the uh, a, attendees Friday how many people had landed? Like 40% of the people yeah. raised, yeah, most of them. raised their hand. A lot yeah. of hands yeah. went up. Tony Brett Hoppy, first things first. First time, fantastic time on Friday, unveiling the Hoppy Kirchvale. First class, as always, hats off to all who made it happen. Second, I agree with Brad. We should have played Kansas on Friday. <laughs> May have caught them off guard, if nothing else. Should have invited Self, Wilson, and Dick to the Ale House on Friday for some Kirchvale. Perhaps they would have been overserved. <laughs> Finally, we need to W in a bad way for Wednesday night against Bay. Let's hope we can make some shots. Robert from Bridgeport, parentheses, home of the world champion Indians. Nathan from Chesterfield, who IDs himself as CPA. <laughs> I missed a handful of West Virginia's home games studying to become a CPA. I'm going to throw those three initials on every document I can for as long as I can. I might request to have it written on my headstone. I love the podcast. Nathan from Chesterfield, CPA. By the way, when I met John, he I didn't say, hey, what, you know, what's your name? And he didn't say Dr. John. <laughs> he just I know, said he John. Laid, he didn't lay low. I said, so what do you do, John? Oh, I'm a doctor. Oh, really? Where are, you? Where are you from? Cleveland. Where do you work there? At the Cleveland Clinic. Yeah, he yeah, he's, he, he did it. The, yeah. Which is great. I'm all for Nathan putting CP on there. Have at it. <laughs> Wouldn't let Tony shame me into not putting my letters on there. Screw it. You want them on there? Put them on there. Nathan, I agree. Throw on your Christmas card. On his tombstone. I agree. That's what makes <laughs> Put it right on there. If that's what makes you happy, go ahead and do it. That yeah. makes you feel better. This basketball team had us fooled, says a texter. They looked the part, gritty, hard-nosed, but in reality, they're not. This team will finish around 500, be a major disappointment. I think it's partly my fault because every year I believe this team will be relevant. I think to fa I need to face the reality that West Virginia's sports teams are not relevant currently. And I do not see this changing anytime soon. You are in a down cycle here. Texter, scope spreads and hoppy to the third. Hello. You three have been the lunchtime entertainment for me and my wife since we retired in 2018. You are a taste of home out here in Evansville, Indiana, where, we, where work took us several years ago. I want to share a picture of a special Christmas gift that I received. My wife had the concept and my daughter brought it to reality with her crafting skills. The girls really know how to personalize a gift. Keep going what only you three can do and look forward to having a frosty cold Kerchival with our sandwich while watching your 800th episode. All the best, Bob. P.S. We have land in Doddridge County. It's been in my wife. Listen to this. It's been in my wife's family since 1800s. Wow. Look at that shirt his uh, wife and daughter did. <laughs> three guys shirt. Wouldn't it be nice to have three guys shirts? What are you saying? Uh, people probably want three guys shirts. My brother-in-law asked about it. I didn't have an answer. Effort. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we're effort. Texter. Com coming soon. Okay. The times are tough. WV Athletics in a rut across the board. But Hugs has given us so many memorable moments to turn our backs on him now. He deserves our loyalty. He's earned it. 
The tenacity of this state has moved mountains throughout its history, and we all know well we do our best when the chips are stacked against us. If we as a fan base have to will this team back to winning, by gosh, let's saddle up Mountaineer Nation. Let's believe in our team if they are struggling to believe in themselves right now. We are all Mountaineers in this thing together. Let's go. Grant in Morgantown. Brad, Brad, set the line for Wednesday. What's your line? Uh, West Virginia by a a couple. West Virginia minus two? Short favorite. Okay. Sean in Washington State. Hi, three guys. I'm not down on the men's basketball team. To the contrary, I think they'll be the proverbial Phoenix. Free Jose, and let's go. Yeah, that's, that's simmers. That's continuing to simmer, right? Texter, what are your thoughts on fans who root for out-of-market teams or schools that they did not attend or grow up near? I've always thought this was a very telling sign of a character and has really let me down as a matter of integrity, unless there is a damn good reason. Wow. If I meet a huge Buffalo Bills fan from Somersville, I'm deducting integrity <laughs> points. P.S. The text in the last episode from the guy whose wife wishes he went to a different school hit home for me. Right as my wife and I were getting married, she was trying to decide between law school at West Virginia or going to grad school for psychology. Three of the grad school possibilities were Florida, LSU, Kansas. 24-year-old Pete was a nomad down for an adventure. I've always wondered what life would be like as Gary from Gainesville, Lawrence from Lawrence, or Bill from Baton Rouge. I love the show. Pete and Pensboro. By the way, I grew up in the middle of the I- middle of Iowa, rooting for the Houston Oilers. So I disagree with his premise vehemently. Oof, we gave it a vehemently. Ve- added a vehemently. <laughs> added a vehemently on that. I think my character's fine. I think that you can find if you're a sports fan. For me, my first allegiance is to my school. Okay, and then I grew up following the Washington football team, but because of Dan Snyder, I've moved away from that. And now because of regionality, I follow the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I think that if you follow sports, you can learn about a team or a program or a coach or a player or players that that you're interested in Mm -hmm. and want to follow. I mean, Brad and I became sort of de facto fans of Kansas State because of Bill Snyder. I mean, there are just I think there are things that that you learn about teams like, hey, I kind of like that team. It's interesting you brought that up. We have a student basketball manager who, like in sixth or seventh grade, he said, just became a Kansas State fan just because of purple. Mm-hmm. He's in, he's in Jer- like I think he's a Philly or Jersey guy somewhere. Just like purple, just just fell in love with him purple. Yeah, I don't have a problem. Like sometimes people will come up to me and they'll say like, uh, 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 like trepid. I'm a Marshall fan. Like that's okay. That's that's cool. Like you, schools have to have fans. I mean, this thing doesn't work if the if the, if you don't have support. The more supporters you have, the better it is. What did what did when you had like that um, Pitt Snoggle Hair Bear Beeline team? You had fans all over the country. Sure. What about when you had Pat White and Steve Slayton? You yeah. had fans from all over the country. You still meet people today that say, "Well, I grew up and I was watching them," and I got so yeah. It, it goes both ways. Doug in Bridgeport writes, I believe people can change, but it's rare. That being said, I'd say the odds of Eric Stevenson ending the season on the roster are low. He believes it is he who is, and it makes him the player he is. That tells me he doesn't think he can change or want to change. Which means we have to get lucky and get Perez available because we need someone to replace his score. And by all accounts, this is what Perez can do from that two-guard spot. I wish it weren't so. I like Stevenson, and he can play other than he seems to throw a few bonehead passes every game, but I don't see this ending well. Tony, on the Stevenson thing, and you have spoken highly of him because you know him because you travel with the team. Uh, I've met some I've, – there's somebody else I know who knows Stevenson and has worked with him that says he couldn't be a nicer guy. Uh, he's, he's done those things, which I thought – that I, I didn't expect this when he came out and apologized and took responsibility and said, I'm going to be different. And, you know, Brad, you may want him because you think that's affected his game. But to me, that shows maturity. That that's, that's when, that's what an adult does. That's what an adult does. And I didn't even think it was necessary. I was surprised that he did it. All we needed to do was just not do it anymore, not grab his crotch anymore, but he came out and apologized. That's, that's what adults do, and and I think he, I, I think he's earned a. Uh, I had a lot of respect for him for doing that. I thought his apology was very good. 
very sincere. You know, you can do BS apologies a lot of the time. You see BS apologies all the a lot time. Of time not aren't. I thought he did. Yeah, I hit it. But, but to Brad's point, I mean, it, it impacted him. I think he'll bounce back emotionally. But I think it, there's no question that his his mental state had a very very rough go this past week. He'll bounce back. Hope he hits the first two threes of the game and starts yeah. barking immediately in somebody from <laughs> Baylor's face immediately. <laughs> Which is okay. You can do. Just don't get technical. That's all. Yeah. And there's, I, a lot, there's a lot you can do. Doug, I disagree. I think he's on the roster at the end of the season. I think I think he's fine. Texter. This is an interesting text. I want both, tell him. Listen to me. I want both of you guys to pay attention to this okay. next one. Sorry. Gentlemen, Ben and Scott Depot, with ample land and a lake in Jackson County. Yeah, I, debated, I, de- I debated internally whether to send this text for fear that you might think it is unfair criticism. It is only constructive criticism, which we all need from time to time. Even America's Finest Podcast, with all capital letters, all due respect. Well, here it comes. Can we? <laughs> here comes the <laughs> all, all due respect. We, we know caps. well what follows that. Here it as comes. You would, as you would say, Brad, here comes the heater. Yep. <laughs> Dig in, Kerchival. <laughs> High and tight fastball coming. <laughs> with all due respect. Can we cease with calling Oklahoma, Oklahoma, and Cincinnati, Cincinnati? (laughs) It was mildly amusing the first 200 times, but now simply getting stale and annoying. And can we cease with the mouth gluck, gluck, tongue on roof of mouth noises? I think Tony does that one. Seriously, you guys are the best in consistently informing and amusing us Mortal listeners. I appreciate that text, Ben. And with all, a couple due, respect. Of, with all due respect, a couple of points, a <laughs> couple of points. Um, just personally, the Oklahoma and the Cincinnati <laughs> probably don't leave. Uh, the uh, two things on the mouth thing. Uh, (laughs) number one i do it i do it either second or third least i may be the least i heard it recently when i was listening back to an episode got on my nerves too (laughs) so i probably going forward based upon your text will do the less (laughs) but Oklahoma and Cincinnati <laughs> probably don't go away. That's my That's go your ahead. take. Yeah. My my take as you can probably guess is thanks Ben. <laughs> Appreciate that. I'll say what I want to say. And gluck when I want to gluck. <laughs> with and all due respect. Like to, and with all due respect, Ben, hey, if you want to turn it off, turn it off. But you know what? He just def- he just named it. We never knew what to call. He called it a gluck. Is that what it sounds? It sounds like That's what it- he calls it. I don't know that I'm going to go with a gluck. Would that, Hoppy, would that be an onomatopoeia? Poeia? Is that a Don't worry, Ben. I probably won't do it a thousand times from this point to the end of the episode. Michael, I, I mean, Ben's all right. He was very nice. I know. Michael and Culloden. I said all due respect. Yes, you did. I found a little nugget that I'm sending. I think spreads will like it the most. As for the officials in football or basketball, I can accept they make mistakes, but when it comes to a critical time, we usually end up on the short end. Well, it just feels like us against the world. Michael and Culloden. But I didn't think I got a picture, though. I just Googled this. The first thing that came up is, what is the clicking and popping noise coming from my jaw? <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> it's a medical condition. Thank you very much. Oh, well, maybe we all have it. Maybe we all suffer from this medical con- condition. Texter. I hope the holidays have treated you all well. One of my favorite themes is there's always a West Virginia connection. Well, The guy who texted in about hearing sexual healing in the physical therapy waiting room on the whole Doug episode is my old college roommate and one of my best friends. Since the episode took an unusual turn, as all episodes normally do, I then found myself listening to you all talk about the filming of Mothman Prophecies in Contanning, Pennsylvania. While I was still in school at West Virginia, the waiting room guy, whose name is Chris McGuffin, and I decided to load up one day and head up toward the greater metroplex of Catani. However, if you're thinking we went to find Mothman, that would be too easy. We actually were on a mission to visit various filming locations of the pilot episode of the FX hit show, Justified. To other listeners looking for an awesome show to binge, Justified 
starring Timothy, how do you say that guy's name? Oliphant. Oliphant is it. I love the podcast, and thanks for all you guys do. Let's go, Mountaineers. Ty in Oak Hill. Texter, while you're loving on Gomart, don't forget the potato wedges at the Flatwoods location. Ooh. Worth the trip. Mm, I've not had those. So is that just an individual to uh, Gomart's? They're the only ones that sell the potato wedges? Don't know. First I've heard of that. Well, they might sell the best. So when you go to Gomart next time, get gas. 52-foot Slim Jim, and potato wedges, and plus whatever else. We don't talk much about hydration there at Gomart. You can get any kind of drink you want. Get a big water. Get a big syrupy drink. Cold beer. Maybe someday they'll have Kerchevale in a can. Hmm. Be kind of nice. Hey, three guys, this past weekend I'm watching an old 30 for 30 ESPN, Requiem for the Big East mainly on the formation of the conference. It got me thinking how much I really miss that type of rivalry era. It also seems to to parallel the problem we now see. Nonstop transfer portal. Players have no sense of pride, school loyalty. The only thing that's being played now is NIL for money. You can disagree, but it's in my opinion. Anyway, I'd like to know what you all miss the most about the old Big East. If you had the chance today and the choice today to have West Virginia back in the Big East during its heyday or stay in the current Big 12, which would you choose? All right, let's frame that again. If you had the choice today to have WVU back in the Big East during its heyday or to stay in the current Big 12, which would you choose? I I like... I know that it's hard because of the regionality, but I, I've moved on. You know, I, I like this conference. I like the schools. I like the the competition you have. This is a very good basketball league. It's also a good football league. I like the Big 12. I'm all in. Senator. I miss Madison Square Garden in the Big East Tournament. My favorite part of any league, of all the leagues I've been a part of, miss the Big East Tournament in Madison Square Garden. I thought that was best. Also miss being on the road at Big East venues and seeing a bunch of Mountaineer fans. I think that's what you've lost, the regionality you've lost. But I also like the Big 12. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. It is the Burdett Camping Center. And some sad news uh, from the folks at Burdett. The founder, Scott Burdett, uh, our good buddy Phil's father-in-law, passed away last night. Oh. Sorry to hear that, as uh, Scott Burdett has passed. And uh, that Burdett name, obviously, um, for many, many years, uh, helping out people, providing uh, great, you know, besides selling RVs, the community's things that they do are off the chart. And that's why they've been around for as long as they have. So uh, sincere consul- condolences uh, to the Burdett family and to uh, to Phil Abbott as well. Texter, as a bonus item, how about giving us an update on the WV women's basketball team during each podcast? Thank you, Kathy, in Washington, West Virginia. That's Wood County. Washington, West Virginia yes. is Wood County. Um, WV women had a, a really nice win on Saturday at Kansas State. Back home tomorrow night, we tape Monday. Tuesday night, they host the Frogs of TCU. And uh, Don Plitza, White, and crew, uh, they're doing well. Unbelievable transformation year. I mean, tons of personnel changed out, right? They're going to guard. They guard. They guard right now. And as she continues to, you know, put her system in and the whole thing, yeah, they're going to be really good. Talk to somebody Saturday that was in attendance at the game former coach, said, if you know what you're looking at watching hoops, this staff is elite. Really? Yeah. So, in other words, in coaching terms, interesting. they run good stuff. Was the exact phrase that was used. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the big, that's the big coach thing. The ultimate respect is they run good stuff. They run really good stuff. Yeah. They weren't supposed to. I mean, that's a hard win at K-State. K-State had like 12 wins. They're twelve and three. They also Maybe. gave. I, I was at the Oklahoma game here recently. They gave. They gave Oklahoma a good run. 
Yeah, they did. Played me. I mean, and Oklahoma's, out of gas. Oklahoma's really good. Scores a ton of points. One of the top scoring teams in the country. West Virginia was in there for for a lot of that game. Yeah. Texter, guys, I don't understand the Jose Perez decision. Why didn't West Virginia or Perez's personal attorney go to court challenging the NCAA ruling based upon past rulings and practices? I don't think the NCAA would want that can of worms opened. Signed by Nikki Meatballs. Well, Tony, the NCAA, as you know, keeps a very tight lid on <laughs> transfers and Brad guaranteeing that the young men follow all the rules when going from one school to yeah, another. Rules followed very strictly. Hard to get a transfer waiver. Doesn't happen much. Right. So here in the next day or two. Except for every other player in the entire country. Next day or two. So the deal is West Virginia. By the way, let me go back. Perez can get an attorney to try to file that. I think they're going to wait until the final ruling comes down and then go from there, which could come today, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's when it's expected. Texter, non-believing scopes, beer brewing dean, and the justifiably frightened spreads. Normally, you guys are judged by a jury of spouses regarding your listeners' devotion to the program. Allow me to introduce you to a teenage girl whose ire you have drawn. My 13-year-old daughter did her history project on the Mothman and won at the county and regional levels before advancing to states. She proudly flies the flag for the Mothman and couldn't understand why the man her father spends so much time listening to could be so skeptical of something as ingrained in the culture of West Virginia as pepperoni rolls and fly rod Slim Jims. Mm -hmm. Bailey has asked that you please reconsider your stance on the Mothman as she believes a healthy respect for the creature could reverse some of the bad juju you've invented, invited on yourself for dismissing its existence as cavalierly as you have. Signed by Charlie and Beckley, P.S. attaches a picture of Bailey proudly displaying a project. <laughs> okay, but... Good work, did, Bailey. Ba- did Bailey establish that it's, it's a mythical creature and not the guy in the suit that you allege it is? <clears throat> I mean, she's done the research, so we have an expert. We should defer to her. I think that's what she's saying. That it is a mythical creature. Correct. Or maybe a real creature. Oh, I see. But not the, not just the guy in not the suit. Not just some guy in a suit. Yeah. Well, we well we knew that. That was crazy to begin with. I, sta- I stand with Bailey. Thank you, Bailey. Looking at that picture and looking at that project, I just think I identified right now with post-traumatic science fear disease. <laughs> because in seventh and eighth grade, we had to do those things. And, like, I look at that as truly, like, top ten things I hate in it having to do in my life. It, that would be in the top ten. That science fair thing stressed me out. Oh, really? Out. Mm. Stressed me out. I remember I did one on radio and radio frequencies. And my thing, my graph that I had, like, she's got Mothman. Mm. My thing was, like, this picture of radio waves going to hitting the ionosphere and coming back down. Nice That's reference. the only thing that I remember. But I hate science fair projects. I hate them. Congratulations, Bailey, on advancing through. No, I'm thrilled for her. And obviously, she enjoyed the process. She went local, states, lined up. Lined up. Beat them. Beat them. So good for you. Text her, Ted from Colorado. Two in-game observations. Kansas passes the ball, and we dribble. I'm a little disappointed with the play of Emmett Matthews. I thought he would be more of a scorer. I think he needs to get more shots, Burnley. Texter, I'm glad I got you guys when we have games like this. It makes things not so bad. So much for being able to shoot. Big, sad, but not too sad guy in Mullins. Texter, Tony with a Y, Hoppy times three, and the Senator, the goat of gambling. Hello, first time, long time, coming off the disappointment of missing the event yesterday and the Kansas loss, and an avid West Virginia and Mountaineer alum with land in Fayette County. Here's Mm -hmm. an intriguing question. In a battle on any field, who wins, the Mothman or the Flatwoods Monster? I know there's personal interest with uh, Scopes knowing the inside scoop on the Mothman, but would love to hear the feedback in the scenarios. Also, could either bring hope for Mountaineer Athletics next season I think the only hope is a resurrection of the Powell Mountain Goat. 
Go Mountaineers. Thanks for the weekly laugh. C.L. Bales on the edge of the gorge in Fayetteville, West Virginia. Can I say something about the Mothman? Sure. I'm sorry I brought it up. Really? Yeah, because it's become like a regular occurring thing. Like, ain't no big deal. Guy put a suit on, pretended he was the Mothman. He was the Mothman. I'd like, can we move on from that? Thank you. Texter. He's trying to correct false information that you were. Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, uh, Skippy, when you go down there yeah. and you wear your big fancy suit down at the Rotunda. Yes, sir. In the next couple of days. Yep. I guarantee you people are going to come up to you and they're going to ask you about, obviously, the podcast. Secondly, your beer. You might get a, you might get a visit and get more intel on this whole Mothman scenario. Is he threatening you? No. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm being I mean, honest. What are you saying? The Mothman's going to come see him? No, I'm just saying. That's like what someone, that sounded like. You think the okay. Mothman's going to see him? <laughs> that should not how it sounded like. It should be That's, like this. That, that is how it sounded. Like, Did you, you take might it that be way? getting a visit yeah. Yeah. No, 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 from no, the no. Mothman. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it then like that. Then maybe you. No, I think it's going to be more of a conversation like this. Hey, Hoppy, come here. I hear Tony talking about that. Toppy, you know who it is. It's him. It's him. Yeah, you've been down here this long, Hoppy. You know, he did it. Yeah, <laughs> That's what it's going to be. And you're going to go, holy, I didn't know that. That's what it'll be. And you're going to come back here next Monday. And, like, get all puffed up. You're going to go like, dude, I never knew. Yeah, he told me about it. Yeah, it's there. That's what it's going to be. So you think, what number episode is this? 32, I think. 432? Mm-hmm. I think it's the last one. Well, we're not getting to 450. <laughs> you come back here spewing your BS about the Mothman. We're not getting to 450. I'm out. I'll tell you one thing for sure. Won't be party with we're you. We're not seeing here. 800. These people keep bringing up that 800. Oh, we're yeah. not seeing no. We're not seeing 500. You might not see Thursday. Some of us. <laughs> Texter, I'm writing this at the risk of not having it read in the afterglow of Hoppy's Hoppy Hour, but here goes. I will not lament about the continuing saga of the gang that could not shoot straight, as you will be inundated with many negative viewpoints. I did notice that Hoppy had an editorial stating how he almost retired. I hope he holds off on that one, but tell him to call Pete Thamel for an update, <laughs> which got me to thinking about Bob Huggins. I'm not calling for his head, but could not help but notice he seems tired. Coach Harrison is taking on more duties during in-game, while Huggins simply looks disgusted with the team. Huggins is still a great coach, but the portal and the new age attitude of the players has worn thin. His contract is up in 2024, no word of extension. Retirement in the wind? Question mark. Who are your picks should that occur? You know, one note about my personal situation, I had to get that out there. I was afraid that Thamel was going to tweak it out. <laughs> I decided to stay on. and I... <laughs> That would have been the best tweet of all time. What if Thamel Kurt pulled one out I should have called Pete and we said, should, hey, yeah. just, hey, just do me this, buddy. Send out one that says <laughs> Metro News, Javi Kurjipal will return in 2023. That would have been the almost goal. I can't wait to talk to Pete to let him know how you're, you're in his head. Oh, he's, he's, he's yeah, yeah. rent-free in my head. Oh. Uh, as far as hugs, I, I mean, I don't follow that contract thing. So he's saying the contract's up in 24? I didn't, I don't, I didn't follow that. Um, well, obviously, things aren't going as hugs had hoped. There's no question about that, and everything has changed. And we've talked and talked ad nauseum here on this program over the last several years that the college game has had this unprecedented change in personnel acquisition and you know coaches that are have been in the game for a long time you know are trying to get their hands around this thing so you know if you were to ask hugs is this as fun as it used to be the answer would be emphatically no it's not as fun but that's not to say that you know he doesn't want to continue to do it. But there's no question this change is unprecedented. As far as like when that day does come, who are your picks? That's an all-time great question right there. Because there is no, well, it's going to be this guy. Right? Not yet. Like when Don Nealon left, it was, it's Rich. 
You just knew right. it was going to be rich. Um, but after that, think about this. When and if that time, well, not if, but when the time comes and Hugs calls it quits, WV basketball will, try, will be trying to replace two consecutive Hall of Famers in John Beeline and Bob Huggins. Now, John's not in the Springfield Hall yet, but he will. Yeah, I think oh, he will be. He will be. And so you think about the run that West Virginia has been on here since 2000, when John, 2001, 2000, whatever it was, one or two. Yeah. <clears throat> Texter, John, who used to be in near Philadelphia, the questions that should have been asked of Hugs after the Kansas game are these. You've lost 17 of the last 20 league games. Is that true? Senator, is that true? They were um, four. They were four and they were four and yeah. fourteen. Last, yeah, I guess it was four. Yeah, that's a heck of a stat, right? Four there. Four last year or three? Four, I think. Four and fourteen. Four uh, and fourteen. Th- e- yes, yes, four. So that's four of four and seventeen. Four of your last twenty-one. Four of the last twenty-one. Yeah, well, seven. Yeah. Who? Seventeen of the last twenty-one would be it. Um, what does the future hold for you and your program? Well, obviously, I mean, you're just you're trying to dig out of this thing, right? You're trying to dig out of this. So yeah, you're right. Four and fourteen a year ago, and not the start you wanted here. It's tiring, but I mean, what's tiring is we just keep saying how close Oklahoma State and Kansas State were. That if you get those two, the whole perception was okay. They have dug out of the hole, but now until you get some, some back-to-back wins, you're not going to be able to say that. Texter, good day, gentlemen. I have a quick comment. I love my Mountaineers. I never thought we'd get to this point in both basketball and football where we are everyone's get-right game. I've been a huge fan since the early 80s. Can't remember at a time where both have struggled at the same time. I'm like everyone that I get so aggravated after each game, but the next day I'm back and thinking maybe the next game. Jeff and Scott Depot. Texter, gentlemen, tinfoil hats installed. Maybe our new AD was actually brought in to make a change in basketball. Offense has been awful several seasons. Our stuff is not good. Tired of the same excuses. Just saying. Let's hope we can turn it around. Signed, let's go. Spreads wannabe Sam in South Carolina. So there's someone, Brad, that's trying to be you. Wants to be a Sam. Wants to be a spreads guy. Texter to the beer conglomerate, once known as three guys, out of curiosity, I wanted to see where we stacked up to many other Power 5 basketball programs. The closest to the Mountaineers since 2018, Rutgers. Yeah, that Rutgers. They're 79 and 58 since 2018. West Virginia's 81 and 63. And Rutgers has one more winning season. Somehow Rutgers has become, West Virginia's become the Rutgers of the Big 12. With all due respect, I think. Chris in Marietta, Ohio, via Mullins, West Virginia. Chris Meadows. P.S. Why isn't Joe Missoula in the West Virginia Hall of Fame? Well, I'll ask your, I'll answer your P.S. first. First off, you got to be out ten years, and quite honestly, Joe's numbers as a player won't warrant him into the Hall of Fame. He averaged like five or six points. No, Tony, um, oh, the ahead, other part of it is I think in time, Joe's accomplishments as a coach could get him into the WV Sports Hall of Fame. You know, back to this Huggins thing, and I, you know, I get the frustration, and the, the, the frustration is legitimate, and the team has not performed at a level that, pe- that meets expectations. But you have, a, you have a coach who is in the Hall of Fame while an active coach, He's one of the all-time winningest coaches ever. He's won a ton of games, and he's gotten into the Final Four. He has, Brad, he has built up 
a tremendous amount of cachet of goodwill. You don't judge him the same as another coach who's going through a struggling period. You just don't. You don't. I think that's well said. And that's, but you also, we're back to the same discussion we're having in football, but you also got to win games, right? So this group's got to win games and it's got to win games soon here. But his, but his, but his rope is a lot longer. As it should be. Right, as yeah. it should yeah, be. As it should I be. mean, much longer sure. than it is for the football coach sure. because of his because of his history, his connection, his previous success. Equity. You just have a lot more of the uh, that's been built up over time. You got a lot more in the bank. Yeah, he's got equity, like as a yes, house. Equity. That's, yeah, he's got plenty he's of got equity. A, he's got equity built into his house, but at the same time, he would be the first to say he. I mean, how many times has he said he despises losing? This doesn't. I mean, this he hates this. He hates this. So how long does he just say, like, I'm not, you know, at some point he's going to say, I'm not running my head into the wall here. He hates it. This is foreign to him. When you've won over 900 games, 926 games, like, he doesn't know how to handle this. He's never had to handle this. He hates it. That's why you can hear it in his post game, right? He's just like, what is this? I've never done this before. I've done this for, like, 50 years. I've never done this before. You can hear it in them. It kills them. Ben in Pittsburgh. Players I wanna... probably aren't enjoying it either. No. No. I mean, they hate it. They want to win. Yeah. Ben from Pittsburgh. Make I want to say. Wednesday, beat Baylor. And you're back. Here we go. All right. Beat Baylor. <laughs> beat Bears. Ben from Pittsburgh. I want to say I'm so happy for Geno Smith. I thought he could have a good season. However, Pro Bowl playoff starter exceeded my expectations. Also, I just want to thank you guys for putting on such a great event on Friday. I had a great time. There, Ben in Pittsburgh. Watching that game yesterday, and I'm listening to it, and, and the announcer says, Geno Smith has just become the single-season passing leader on the history of the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, that, that caught me. I mean, that, now, they had one, one additional game, but still, he, Brad, he was right on the verge of it before the game. I mean, who saw that? That is incredible uh, by I, him. I'm with Ben. I'm I'm thrilled for him. Yeah. Right for a guy that everybody wanted to ha ha he he laugh and point <laughs> when he got sent to that miserable Jets franchise, right? And he bounced around. He was a backup, and ten years later, dude comes through with a playoff playoff start, as Ben mentioned, Pro Bowl franchise record in multiple things. It wasn't just the yards passing, but that's a big one. And by the way, picked up a two mil bonus yesterday. Excuse me, two million dollar bonus yesterday for making the playoffs. Gino did. You know what? And, I think and, that's awesome for him. That's a great story. You remember we were talking before the before the show when he was here and they had that. I mean, disappointing senior season, but you know he always had a rocket. And now you see in the pros, he has still got that arm, man. He threw that touchdown pass. I think it was to Metcalf, that one where Metcalf caught it the like the back of the end zone. It was perfect. I also don't know how he doesn't win comeback player of the year. Oh, he has to. I, I don't know how he wouldn't. It's incredible. Put that on the list. Awesome season. Good for him. Maybe, no, it was to Lockett. Lockett caught that pass. Yeah. Pretty good player, too. Yeah, Metcalf and Lockett, those got to catch pretty good balls. Brad, think they help out? They help. But to, to he think, throws a pretty good ball. But to think, yeah. to think that Geno surpassed what <laughs> Russell Wilson did is just. And Jim Zorn. Jim Zorn. Good Jim Zorn. Remember. He also. Steve that, Largent. You know, he's had, a, he's had a great career in terms of making money as a backup. He's made a lot of money. He, <laughs> he's about to take that two mil he got yesterday, and if he dropped it down the street, walking down the street, he wouldn't even notice it. What do you think? He's going to sign a big boy contract. What do you think? NFL starter. He's going to get 20 mil a year. He's going to sign a big boy contract here. That's awesome. That's awesome he should, get, should get more because the, the going rate's 40 for yeah, a starter. should get more. He's older, though. And it's, yeah, Wait, you're right. Him on the bench but, you know, for all it, it's years. interesting, too, because of the juxtaposition, because of Russell Wilson, how, how Denver's struggling. Mm -hmm. Good for him. Yeah, you know absolutely. it has. It, uh, there's I mean, always there's awesome. always a West Virginia connection, right? Yeah. You know what the West Virginia connection is on this new contract? What? Them boys over at the Mountaineer Athletic Club. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> we gotta get a little bit of that away from you to get a little tax. By the way, Gino, do you know we're putting uh, putting your name up on the Gino tax deferrals? Gino, you don't need to pay all that money to the government. Get a little bit over here, tax deductible. No prank call. Country Roads Trust might call too. Sure. What now? Country Roads Trust might call him. A lot of people might call him. Come to where your heart is. Uh, hi, Tony. I wanted to take a little time to say thank you for everything you and Brad did to put together such a wonderful event. 
Even though I was unfairly attacked by Brad immediately upon arrival at the event on Friday, we had a great time. Oh, my. Hmm. The beer was fantastic, and it was kind of surreal to hang out with you, the guys that I listen to each week. I didn't get to talk to you guys all that much, but my dad made sure to tell you the stories he wanted, and he couldn't quit talking about the event all weekend. Living in Austin, Three Guys keeps us connected to both West Virginia and my dad while surrounded by a sea of stupid burnt orange. (laughs) Since introducing him to the podcast a few years ago, there has been no shortage of calls just to say, hey, did you hear what Hoppy said today? (laughs) It feels like being in the room with somebody sharing thoughts and opinions and weirdly feels like we have three more friends who just don't know about us. Just know that you guys provide comfort and entertainment for many more than you know. You are all three appreciated greatly. Signed by Chris, Austin, Texas. He's a doctor of chiropractic. I met him. Yeah, because we were talking about Austin because Ben. Yeah, we met him. We talked to him. He's a great guy. He and his dad came. I wish nice I text. Asked. What did I attack him about? Oh, you're just having fun with him. Oh. You're just having fun. Nice. Nice. You're having I, fun. Although he, I can't he take any, having fun with you, but I can't I, take I any credit. I probably want to know what he did. I, this thing right here, I mean, probably could have fixed that, couldn't he? They yeah. do those adjustments. Is that what they do? I can't take any credit for the event. I did very little. Yeah, you, well, you did more than me, which uh, was not much. Well, you, at least you I tell you, not but much. It, you know, the event, the event promoter and Tony did it. The, Dave, well, yeah, they did. And Tony, you were organized. Dave want Hoppy. No. As uh, a couple, two things on this whole thing, organization wise, we sit down for the first meeting. He, so we're with Dave, five star elite buddy of ours that put the whole thing. Together. Number one guy in the transfer portal. We did secure him. So this is what, <laughs> yes, this is what I, this is what, so we have lost this, my landscaper to the transfer portal. We picked met up him. an event organizer. Yeah. Also met some nice guys at real quick side note, met some nice guys. You were long gone. You'd left like four hours earlier. I was still over there talking to people. Damn, he was dumb if that first beer was gone. He Met was some great, two great guys. And they led him, I can fix your lawnmower for you. Oh, you guys. Oh, oh, that was oh here we go. I said, is that right? Is that like now? You want to head over now? Fix it now? <laughs> Hood's up right now. And so, okay, that's very nice. But can, I mean, can you really? They said, well, we're mechanics. I said, oh, okay, okay. That's well, probably have more advanced knowledge than me. They proceeded then to show me what they build and make, Hoppy. Yeah. Uh, like drag racing race cars. Oh, wow. And my one guy drives them and has multi, what what I tell you? 14, 18 national titles. National championships. Really? <laughs> they were excellent. Clock. So I think I think they can probably help me at some point. Yeah, I mean, they build them from scratch. Yeah, like that from probably, scratch. That could probably get your John Deere. But your more is now gonna go sixty miles an hour <laughs> going the grass. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. No. That's what I need. I'll be done in seven minutes. <laughs> that'd be then. awesome. That'd be, it's, hey, good news, bad news scenario. You know those guys I met at the uh, at the beer thing? Yeah. The mechanic? Yeah. Came over and fixed my mower. Well, that's great. Yeah. One problem. What? I go 93 miles an hour in my subdivision now. I've fallen off four times. They were, so they many, were great. But but it they just was it was great to be, so many interesting stories and people, interesting lives and things that they do. It was really a lot of it was a lot yeah. of fun. I probably shouldn't have Did left you finish your story there? You said the first time we sat down. Did you finish that thought or did I interrupt you? The first Forgot time it. we Oh yeah. Oh, first Dave. time we sat down with Dave on this promotion thing. Hey, let's do this event. He attacks me and says, Dave, you're gonna have to do it all. He's an idea guy. Tony's an idea guy. He never executes. He never, he just does ideas. That's all he does. Well, what does Dave come and say on Friday? What? Brad, you were a little off on Tony. He's been fantastic in following through. You were, Tony, you were. Two things didn't hear that. Didn't say it to me. <laughs> Only said to you. Never said, didn't, didn't say it to me. Number two, not off. Number three, Dave's just kissing your butt. I mean, you did, uh, I'm 100% right. Stand by my assessment, and it's accurate. No, wait a minute. He did, Tony did a lot to pull the thing off. Tony did about 10% of what Dave did. Um, but that, that's correct. Oh, that's correct, sir. I did what I did, but I did do my 10%. <laughs> you did way more than me. I mean, it's in a comparison you no. and me are you, no, you, you were, happy. Hey, you, you were. But, but it, with, you would admit freely and have, without Dave, there's a 0% chance that event happens. If there's a 0%. Go negative than yeah, zero. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Negative 20%. Assessment. Now, but, he, hey, he helped out on Friday. He was down there cutting bubble wrap. He was. But, but Center got the in. execution Friday was primarily... 
you. Well, we laid keeping out keeping things on time, and you did a good yeah, job. Well, I got you. You guys were hobnobbing in here. We had thirty minutes to get fifty pictures made. Got them. Got our picture made. Got every single one. Got them down to the developer. Yes, we got, we're at Photo Mat <laughs> now, getting those done. By the way, for those of you that are uh, that were there, yeah, how do they get their pictures? We'll send them an email with a link. They can take any picture they want, download it. Good. <sighs> Texter, hey guys, I understand we need to work on turning the ball over and passing. That being said, I believe the two losses on the road mostly about missing shots. And being that we shot so well out of conference, regression was coming. Kansas game, we missed Keedy and Eric was pressing to make up for his actions. My concern, if is that if it's that simple as a shooting slump, making too much of it has gotten the guys playing and thinking too much. What do you guys think? No. <laughs> I don't think, no. I don't think that they're, they're, they're trying too hard or it's in their head. It's like they're basketball players. Go play. Go make shots. That's what, that's what you do. Texter, bruise, spreads, and Davy Crockett. I may be slightly optimistic, but as spreads has said many times, one game, three games is our scenario, is not a trend. It's a good team. We haven't caught in any breaks. I feel confident we'll play much better basketball. I see us turning it around, going right down to the end of the season, either at 7 or 11 or 8 and 10 in the league. The former lands us in the NIT. The latter gets us to the dance. We're going to need that Auburn game at home. I think we'll play our best game of the year against the Baylor Bears. I think three games is a trend. Short, but it's Senator, a trend. you trend in that or not? Uh... Concerned, but not yet. All right. Last one. Not Brian and Berkeley Springs. Hey, three guys. Disappointed at the 0-3 league start. But what makes it worse is how we lost each game. We lost each game differently. One, bad free throw shooting. One, bad fouls. And one, just horrible shooting. Is it better or worse than just losing each game the same way? Writes Brian probably be better to lose the same way so you could fix it, <laughs> right? Yeah, but but better shooting would have cured those other ills. To me, the overarching theme is missed free throws and missed shots. That's my bigger, that's my bigger concern here. So if you had a magic wand, what would your one fix be? <sighs> I need to hit threes. If I could only pick one, I might take free throws. Really? Be, because you're going to be you're you've continued to be so good at getting to the line, that's got to stay as an advantage. And if you're missing those shots, if you're getting to the line 10, 11, 12, 15 times more than your opponent, but you're not making a comparable amount, you're not taking advantage of that advantage. That makes sense. So yeah. I think I'd I think I'd pick that one. Kansas, you got to the line nine times more mm -hmm. than Kansas, but only had one more point at the line. Correct. Yeah, I mean that doesn't that didn't cost you that game, but but it's it's going to make a, if these other games are three point games like Ken Palm says it is, then that's going to make a big. If you difference. made free throws against Kansas State and Oklahoma State, do you win those games? Yes. So yes. you're two and one in league. Are we having the same discussion? No, no. So there's one thing that could have fixed both. All right. Twice last week I've came on. I, twice last week I came on this podcast and said that officiating does not decide games. They're going to miss calls. Both teams get calls that are missed. And so I don't put it on the officials. With that being said, uh -oh. in all due respect. With that being <laughs> said, are you going in the transfer portal? With that being said, with all due respect, that flopping call against West Virginia on Saturday, it's a bad are call. you freaking kidding me? Yeah. Get the out of here with that garbage. That's a bad call. Get out of here. But but That's all I'll have to say on that. Okay. Didn't decide the game, but are you freaking kidding me? Okay, it's a, and it was. We talked about it. It was, a, it was a bad call, but it doesn't impact the game whatsoever. I mean, like, the, the fact is you're getting the line. You're getting calls. You're getting yeah, calls. I just wanted to say that one thing. I know, because it was. It was a big call. call. Just total. I mean, I don't know why you call that there. Malarkey. Either. That's what it was, Hoppy. <laughs> that was malarkey. As the president would say. 
Once again, a reminder that later this week, Thursday night, Friday, Hoppy's Beer, Kirchhoff Ale, will be available at the following locations in our area. My house. The Apothecary Ale House. <laughs> <laughs> did you bring any homes? I did not. Yeah. Maybe you should have stayed You didn't longer. fill a growler? Yeah. I did. I did. Well, yeah. maybe, hey, we gave the growlers out after you left. Apothecary Ale House across the street from our studio. The and Tap this... Room, which is near the Alumni Center. Jeans, which is the iconic focal point of all beer consumed in Morgantown for over 200 years. Ke- Sam Adams went to Jeans. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that's where we got the idea. Sam Adams said, I got to have another of these Kirchhoff vows, and damn it, one of these days I'm going to make my own beer. <laughs> Start a revolution. Kegler's. We're going to have it at Kegler's on Thursday night. Oh, are you? Yeah. See if Hugs tries a Kirchhoff Ale. Yeah. Black Bear. Lefties, Change his luck. Big Sandy, Von Blaze, and the Varsity Club right across the street from the football stadium. All right, we're out. We're back on Thursday or Friday. We're trying to work out Numb Nuts' schedule over here. He's put a, written, a wrench into our plans. I'm sorry, the West do you do a legend. do you do a Baylor do you do a Thursday Baylor full brother preview and give people two days before the game? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the Oklahoma preview, or do you give people a one day and do it on Friday? I, 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 I just don't know. Well, I'm sorry that the West Virginia Legislature's meeting is constitutional responsibility and meeting in session. I apologize for that on behalf of You know and I yeah, know sir. that you'll get more questions about three guys down there than you will about absolutely uh, Amendment 627539 that's in the transfer committee of the portal. You talk about he should go down there. He knows all about those conference committees and portals. He's really big into that. He does know about that. Oh, yeah. Probably get some PEIA questions, though. Heavy PI. Heavy PI. Heavy PI. Border, sta- border states. Heavy same thing. kind of thing. Border rivalries, borders, border insurance. It's all the same thing. It's all about pride. <laughs> our pride against their pride. It's all about their PI against our PI. PI. You laugh, that's a big deal. Well, I understand it is. Why well, brought it up? Thank you. I wasn't laughing. Hey, how's your deductible? <laughs> <laughs> going to be maybe day one of the session maybe when had, went, had pia for an that's PIA right you did for a number yeah. of years absolutely you're you know what you know what's going on Jim. three guys before the game brought to us by comax business systems your full service conicum and ultra dealer go to comax business systems at comaxwv.com by the burdett camping center the only warranty forever rv dealer in all of west virginia visit them at burdettcamping.com and by gomart if you're not a gomart rewards card member you need to sign up today Save on gas, your favorite snacks. Go to gomart.com. Back later this week, this has been episode 432, produced by Taylor Tyler County Kennedy Jinglehammer Schmidt. See you.